Well, hello, and welcome to the Most Lab. Thanks for taking the time to look at this video, and uh, we're going to show you around the lab today. As you can see, there's no eating allowed in the lab, um, but you're welcome to have uh, a beverage as long as it's uh, secured and, and covered. There's a lot of different components of the Most Lab. We have two simulators, which we'll get to first, as well as nine uh, adjustable workstations and a full complement of instruments and tissues and then phaco emulsification and vitrectomy machines from different manufacturers. So we'll be doing an overview today and then there's also written instructions for how to use different components of the lab. If there's ever any questions you can always contact myself. I'm Doug Wisner, I'm the director of the, the lab uh, or Marie Fiorillo, she is our lab manager. All right, so the simulators are both networked here internally uh, as well as uh, to the cloud. Uh, and the purpose of that is that you can give different level of trainees uh, the ability to compare their progress uh, to people within their own residency as well as at their same level uh, throughout the rest of the world. So each user has a um, unique uh, user ID and password to be able to access the system. And it's important that uh, you use your own login information and not another user's because otherwise it's going to influence the database. You can see that there's a vitrectomy uh, biome on this uh, setup. This is removable. Um, this is the standard cataract setup. Um, the instruments are located here in these cases and should be returned each time. The system powers on here at this power button and each instrument is color coded. Um, as you can see, these were left plugged in, uh, but the instruments were returned in the case and that's the most important thing. They're very delicate, um, so if you have any issues, uh, please let us know about it. Uh, once you register your account, there's an online orientation uh, for the IC VR Magic simulators uh, and you can walk through different steps of the courseware. Uh, it, it goes through the courseware in a level appropriate for the user's uh, training. So different people will start out at different places, whether it's a first year resident, second year, third year resident, or a, a fellow. Um, over here you can see all the different stations that we have. I'm going to turn one on and show you how to use it. So each station is fully adjustable and automated. There's a simple on off switch in the upper right here. Now we'll turn all the systems on except for the video recorder, which should turn on manually. The image uh, won't show up on the screen until the video recorder boots up completely. The system is set to be able to raise and lower uh, adjustable to a person's uh, a body. So uh, pushing the up button simply raises the entire table. Remember that when you're adjusting the microscope, the microscope is linked to the table. So uh, you have to adjust that up appropriately. The foot pedal is set up similar to the operating room foot pedal. Button number one turns the light on. Uh, upper buttons number five and six increase or decrease the light intensity and you have your standard focus, mag, and XY movement. There's also various shutters and filters on the microscope itself, um, and these can be used for different purposes, whether it's a slip beam or a blue filter, um, and instructions for the microscope are all housed in our cabinet over here, which I'll show later. Each microscope is integrated to the uh, video system and um, if you have any questions in terms of instructing lab and um, uh, displaying video to different stations we can certainly go over that. Once you're done with the microscope station just make sure you turn off the light and then you power down the switch. That's all you need to do. This here is a USB box. Um, it can be used for charging of cell phones um, and other devices. 
Uh, obviously, your recorder should only go into the, uh, the, the Sony hard drive recorder. All right, last over here, we have all of our, our storage. So um, we have both a freezer um, and refrigerators. Uh, depending upon the state of the tissue, it may be housed in different locations. So we order in fresh pig eyes for large format courses or other specialty needs. Those have about a shelf life of five to seven days, after which they're then frozen and placed in the freezer in individual bags. They can be thawed out in lukewarm water uh, and uh, will do so fairly rapidly over about a half an hour or so. Once you're done using the, the pig eye, uh, what we recommend you do is wrap them up in the inside of a surgical glove uh, and then tie it off, put it back in the freezer. Those will then be disposed of. No biological tissues should go in the trash, otherwise we get a stinky lab. <coughs> Any sharps go in these two containers here. Um, please make sure all your sharps are accounted for when you're uh, utilizing uh, tissues. Each cabinet is labeled with the supplies and we try to keep it fairly well organized. Um, here in this tall thin cabinet, you'll see artificial eyes. So this is the Bionico setup with our synthetic eyes that are modular. So it has a holder for which you can place an anterior segment and then a lens. And different types of procedures can be done on these. Uh, in general, the brown anterior segment is used for traditional cataract surgery, a green anterior segment more for iris manipulation um, and um, complex anterior segment surgery. We also have modules for scleral fixation as well. Uh, and you can look up instructions for how to use these in our binder here, or if you simply search on YouTube for Bionico or Oculo, then you'll see respective videos for how to use any of the devices. Please remember if you're using these devices as you're disassembling them, you want to lift from the tab on the suction cup. You can suction cup it down to your workspace. Don't want to lift from the actual holder because otherwise you'll damage the device. Over here, we have our instruments. We'll be installing some shelving, but each tray is etched and labeled at the bottom on the blue with a number. And that number is assigned to a group of residents and or fellows, or some trays are assigned for courses. <clears throat> it's important that you use the tray that's assigned to you, um, because then you'll know if there's any damage to the instruments, who it could have come from and we want to make sure we take good care of our instruments because they're not cheap and they're very good. Um, underneath here is where we have some of our uh, instruction manuals. Here we have trays and styrofoam heads. Moving down this way we have a variety of suture and ophthalmic blades as well as IOLs, different cannulas, syringes, uh, we have a generous allotment of viscoelastic. And then we have a number of different packs and phaco tips and vitrectomy supplies up here and down here. When you are done with your supplies, the most important thing is again to put any biological tissue wrapped up in the freezer. Spray your instruments and any uh, eye holders with the enzymatic spray over here and just leave them next to the sink. Um, Marie, our lab manager, uh, checks in regularly and she'll clean the instruments. If there's any problem, then we want to hear about it. Please feel free to reach out to us in any way. Um, and uh, we're happy to make this a space for you to learn and innovate. Uh, and continue the Will's Eye tradition of excellence. Thanks.